The second proposition is really about how different big O families are related to each other. So here is a formal relation. Let's try to understand this relation first. So what we we'll say, uh, this notation here, if you learned about set theory before, this means the proper subset. I'll review that. Uh, let, me uh, let me review that right away, quickly, in case uh, you have forgot forgotten about the details. So when, uh, it's called a proper subset, which is uh, fundamental, uh, which is different from uh, a subset notation. So let's uh, make sure we understand that properly. Proper subset. Okay, so the way we write it is by saying a set S is a proper subset of T. Okay, to visualize it, it goes like this. S is over here, the one set, let's say it's not empty, and then T should be strictly larger in its cardinality in terms of the set. So this will be T, right? So this really means, number one, every item or every member, let's say every member, just to be more uh, set-oriented uh, saying, every member of S is also a member of T. Okay, number one. And number two, there is, oh, there is. at least one member of T that is not a member of S. Okay, let's see very quickly, right? You can see every member in S at the same time Every member of S is at the same time also a member of T, right? Number one. And number two, at least one member of T that's not a member of S. For example, you can see this is a member over here, right? So you can think about number two over here. This is just one example over here. And if you want to see number one, you can actually uh, look at this particular example, okay? And of course, the consequence is if you want to know about the cardinality, the size of the set, right? Uh, so maybe this is how you actually how you learn about the cardinality of set, right? So the size of the S should be strictly smaller than the size of T, right? That's a consequence. Okay, so that's proper subset. If you actually talk about let's just uh, let's say just subset, in that case you allowed the possibility where S is exactly equal to T, in which case two doesn't really hold. Right? That's about the normal subset. But here we talk about proper subset to make sure number two also has to hold, which is very important for our characterization between big O families. Okay, let's now go back over here. So here we are saying that big O of N0 is a proper subset of big O of N1 and also is a proper subset of big O of N2, right? Let's now try to visualize this right away, okay? Since we talk about proper subset. So think about, we start with this. So this is a set of function for big O of N0. Okay, it's a const, uh, the constant function. And then it's a proper subset of big O of N1, the linear time function, big O of N1, okay? And also, let me just do another one. This one here is, let's say, big O of N2. You can see as we try to grow the exponents over here for the function, right? Zero to one and then to two. The lower power, uh, big O family is actually a proper subset of the higher power big O family, right? That's why you can see, right? And usually we say the biggest one for our, uh, as far as we are concerned for this course, typically it would just be exponential function, the biggest one. So that'll be big O of two to the power of N, the exponential function, right? That's the visualization idea you want to have in your mind, okay? And apparently, well, we're going to do uh, the contrast very soon. For example, between this family over here and this family over here. Think about what's happening over here. I'm going to repeat a point again in the slides. Okay. So this blue one over here. Okay. So think about what it really means. Let's put it here. It's about all the function which can be upper bounded 
by the function over here, right? And zero by choosing the curse uh, by choosing the appropriate uh, multiplicative constant, also the starting point and zero. Okay, and similarly, let me also put n one over here. So this will be all the functions which can be okay upper bounded and by by saying upper bounded hopefully you know the inequality uh, equation that I'm talking about okay upper bounded by n to the power of one right that's the end of to the power of one okay so now if you think about this if a function can be upper bounded by n zero does that really mean it can also be upper bounded by n one Indeed, it is. Uh, indeed, it can. Right. Uh, what? Well, think about what I'm. Uh, what? I, what? You, what? I, let me repeat again, and then we'll see example a little bit later. Let me say it again. Two things. If a function can be upper bounded by n to the power of zero, which means it's in this family over here, can it also be upper bounded by n to the power of one, a strictly higher power? Diagrammatically, yes, because this is also a member of this. But if you think about it. Mathematically, by using the uh, using the upper bound in equation, uh, you can also see why. On the other hand, if a function can be upper bounded by n to the power of one, can it also be upper bounded by n to the power of zero? Can it? Okay. Let me write this uh, write this down. That's the the main thing I want you to actually see. So, if a function is upper bounded by let's say upper bounded by uh let's say n to the power of let's say x okay so for example let's say it is upper bounded by n to the power of one can that function Be upper bounded by n to the power of y, where y is actually a strictly lower power, where I, y is actually less than x, right? For example, n to the power of zero, right? If it is upper bounded by here, can it be also upper bounded by n zero? It may not be, right? For example, if it, uh, this can be upper bounded by n to the power of one, and the same time is also upper bounded by n to the power of zero. On the other hand, this one here will be a counter example. This function here is upper bounded by n to the power of one, but it is not upper bounded by n to the power of zero. Okay, let me just do one more uh, writing and then we, we can go back to the slides. Okay. So there was, this was a question, so not in general, not necessarily. Okay, so that's really important for you to know that it's not necessarily the case, right? It's upper bounded by n to the power of x, and it's an upper bounded by n to the power of y, where it's a strictly lower power. Okay, so now let's uh, say this. Okay, let me just do one more thing. For example, let's say here, let's say f of x, let's say uh, f of n. f of n is equal to let's say n to the power let's say uh let's say 3n plus 1 is upper bounded by n so what what kind of uh, uh, um, uh what kind of multiplicative constant can you choose so you can just apply proposition one at absolute value for three and also absolute value for one in that case we can just choose a four right for n okay it's upper bounded by n but it cannot be upper bounded by n to the power of zero a strictly lower power upper bounded by n zero for any 
uh, C and N0. It's, it's really uh, important for you to also understand this example here. This one here cannot be upper bounded by N0 for any C and N0 because the zero over here is strictly less than the highest power over here, which is one, all right? Okay, and let me just draw one more diagram over here. If you look at that, okay, over here, you can see f of n is actually a linear function, three n plus one, right? Something like that. So this is f of n. And if you think about the constant function n zero, you might be thinking that I can just multiply n0 over here by some very large number. It doesn't matter. Even if you actually multiply by some very large number over here, over here, right? You can think about this function over here is actually some very large constant c multiplied by n0. Doesn't matter how large it is because you can see at some point it's, uh, it's des uh, it's the destiny for the two functions to actually intersect at this point such that f of n is also going to grow faster than the constant function. In that case, f of n just cannot be upper bounded by uh, the constant function. Uh, uh, and doesn't matter how large the constant you have chosen, right? I'm really trying to explain to you why a function simply just cannot be upper bounded by some strictly lower power. In, and you can definitely see this by just uh, this particular example. And similarly, if, you, if I got n to the power of two, can it be upper bounded by n to the power of one? The answer is no. And it doesn't matter how large the constant you may have chosen for this, because eventually the speed of growing for n to, uh, for the, n to the power of two, which is strictly higher power, to catch up the speed and not be upper bounded, right? Please uh, really understand what I'm trying to say over here, all right? Okay, so let me just make a note over here. There is always a point for f of n less than or equal to c strictly less uh, uh, c uh, multiplied by uh, n to the power zero to be false, right? It's really important, right? Quite a bit of information I'm trying to fit in uh, in this single page, but please really understand the logic over here, right? Let's now go back over here, and that's about uh, the two, uh, well, that's just another example. I spoke about N0 versus N1, but now I'm talking about N1 versus N2, right? You can definitely look at uh, the, the member, of member functions that's actually there. Okay, one more visualization I would like to do over here. Okay, we talk about G, uh, big O of G of N, basically the family of functions that can be upper bounded by G of N by choosing some multiplicative constant C and also starting point N zero. Okay, and this is something which I just mentioned. Each member F of N in this particular big O family is such that it will, uh, well, the highest power of let, let me let me illustrate that for you okay so let's say here a big o of n the highest power what well, the power is simply just one over here right so uh what can the family contain any function that can be upper bounded by n to the power of one which would be all those functions whose uh, power would be less than or equal to one including uh n to the power of one maybe two times n to the power of one or any uh, any uh, a times n to the power of one plus b, and a and b can be any integer, right? Mathematically speaking, okay. And also, what about an uh, even smaller power? It can also be uh, n to the power of zero, and also two times n to the power of zero, all the way to maybe some constant a, uh, c, c times n to the power of zero. All these can be upper bounded by why? Okay, so you can just apply this principle over here and see why this will be satisfied. Okay, one more. What about visualizing this? Well, since we said before the proper subset relation, so this will be a proper subset of that, which means every member that's here will be a member over here, right? So we can simply just copy all of them first. Okay, let me just copy all of them. And then there will be some additional ones which belong to 
n to the power of two family, but not uh, n to the power of one family. Let's see. Let me just copy that into here, just for you to see. Let me make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so this part over here is really important for you to identify that this part over here is the family. So this part here is really uh, being contained, the big O of n, right? But we got some more, strictly more member functions over here. So any function that uh, has the power that strictly, uh, sorry, any function that has its power uh, less than or equal to the, uh, the power of two will be okay. So now we are missing, we got power of one, we got, pow uh, we got power of zero, power of one, we are missing power of two. So let me put it down. So it could be n to the power of two, it could be, for example, two n squared plus three n plus one, in general, it would just be maybe a n squared plus b n plus c, where a, b, and c are just simply just uh, different integers. And these functions over here can be upper bounded by this, but they simply grow too fast. Uh, in order for uh, they simply grow way too fast in order for the any multiplicative constant multiplied by n to catch up. So they cannot be upper bounded by n. Okay, final points over here. Okay, so this part over here, so these are the uh, members that are actually in this family over here, but not in this family, because they cannot be upper bounded by, cannot be upper bounded by, upper bounded by C times N. It just cannot. doesn't matter how large the C is doesn't matter how large the multiplicative constant you have chosen, eventually n to the power of two will just catch up, right? In a similar way, like what I show in this particular diagram over here, all right? All right, so that's about the second proposition. Hopefully uh, that also makes sense to you. So, so far we talked about two important propositions for the big O notation. Please make sure you understand that, understand the rationale behind, and then we'll continue to actually cover uh, more examples in the next part.